the double star Capella, perpetually in a celestial waltz. A binary whose combined brilliance is a jewel in the winter sky of the Northern Hemisphere. A sky graced with the beauty of Orion, a constellation bedecked with magnificent nebulae and brilliant stars. And close by, a pulsar, the spinning debris of a stellar giant. Earth's solar orbit is at the stage of seasonal extremes. The northern hemisphere has the short days and long nights of winter, ideal for stargazing. In the south, it's summer. With the Milky Way well in view, these are the winter constellations. We're in the north, looking north. Below Cepheus, the star Deneb peeps over the horizon. The arrow top left near Perseus marks the home of the double cluster. This is the picture in binoculars. Two groups of stars, some 300 in each, as bright as diamonds. Bottom right, beneath Ursa Major and best seen through a small telescope, Galaxy M51, a satellite on its arm. Known as the Whirlpool, M51 has been probed by the Hubble Space Telescope. A strange cross formation at its center evidence perhaps of a black hole. Higher up in Ursa Major and good through binoculars, a pair of galaxies, M81 at the bottom and M82, both eight million light years away, a view to the north in winter. And this is the vista to the south. One constellation dominates the sky, the handsome figure of the hunter, Orion. But Orion is just an effect. If we could fly a great circle through space, the stars of Orion would appear quite different in their relative positions. As with all constellations, only from our perspective on Earth do the stars assume their familiar patterns. The three stars in the belt of Orion are a signpost. Join them up and they point the way to the brightest star in the sky, Sirius. Bright because it's close by in space. Sirius is part of the great dog, Canis Major. The two stars at the top of Orion are another indicator. They point to a much smaller constellation, aptly named the little dog, Canis Minor. Its brightest star is another neighbor of ours, Procyon. Take two more stars in Orion, extend a line through them, and it leads to a great multiple star, the system of Castor. Castor forms the head of one of the mythical twins in the constellation of Gemini. Back to Orion's belt, but instead of projecting towards Sirius, go the other way, towards a vivid orange star. It's our near neighbor, Aldebaran, 40 times the diameter of the sun. Aldebaran is the great eye in Taurus the bull. In the shoulder of the bull, a star group called the Pleiades, easy in binoculars. Orion, our guide to the winter sky of the Northern Hemisphere. And here's a wider perspective, looking south. Orion still dominates the picture. The main constellations, with the Milky Way running from Origa at the top to Canis Major at the bottom. Top right, in Taurus, we take a closer look at the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters. There are far more than seven. Blue, hot and young, some 250 stars bathe in the dust from which they were born. 
At the center, still in Taurus, a tiny pulsar. Spinning 30 times a second, the corpse of a giant star which exploded 900 years ago, a supernova that formed the Crab Nebula. Top center, in Auriga, the double star Capella. Together, they shine 160 times brighter than the sun. Top left in Gemini, the multiple star Castor, a small red binary orbiting a pair of blue binaries. Six stars in one, and distinguishable as three entities through a telescope. Center left, towards Monoceros, a patch of diffuse nebulosity. A black cone of dust seems to point to a central group of stars, the Christmas tree cluster, good through binoculars. Again in Monoceros, a quite beautiful nebula, the Rosette, a clutch of baby stars in a nest of hot gas. The brightest can be seen in binoculars. If we could fly towards Orion, at 500 light years, we'd meet Betelgeuse, a red giant that could swallow the inner solar system as far as Mars. A stud on the belt of Orion, a region invisible to the naked eye, but through a telescope, a billowing cloud of black dust silhouetted against red hydrogen, the Horsehead Nebula. From Orion's belt hangs a sword. At the tip is one of the finest objects in the sky, M42, the great nebula in Orion, a place where stars are born and visible in binoculars. Again, if we flew towards Orion, at 900 light years, we'd encounter Rigel. Rigel is a superstar. 50,000 times brighter than the sun. But it burns so fiercely, it'll have a much shorter life. Bottom left to Sirius. The brightest star with a companion. A white dwarf, just a few times bigger than Earth. This is a real picture through a large telescope. And this is the same part of the sky from the southern hemisphere. Join two points in Orion and project a line upwards. Here is the second brightest star, Canopus. Join two more stars in the handy signpost of Orion and they point to the mouth of a waterway, the star Achenar. Achenar lies at one end of the long meandering constellation of the river Eridanus. The wider view in the southern hemisphere, it's summer looking north. Orion straddles the cosmic equator. Now the sky looking south, the Milky Way and the southern constellations of summer. At the top, hidden in the constellation of Pupis, a spectacular sight. Like a jellyfish, a vast globule of gas is in retreat. It's driven by energy jetting from hot younger stars. A last vista of summer. Next time in Encyclopedia Galactica, we'll complete our star trekking explorations with the stars and constellations visible during spring in the northern hemisphere and summer in the south looking at Leo in the north and Vela in the south. And then we go to the moon, reliving the story of man's spaceflight from Yuri Gagarin's first orbit of the Earth to the Americans' first landing on the moon. Next time in Encyclopedia Galactica.
Arthur C. Clarke next attends a convention for people who've had near-death experiences and tries to explain their stories. <laughs>